Oh, smokes! Is it possible the bond vigilantes are back? And what could that mean for the real estate and stock market? This is a big deal. We got to talk about it in this video, but also how much was Donald Trump potentially going to get paid not to run for president by Sam Bankman Freed, as some like to call him Sam Bankman Fraudster? Well, in this video, we're going to talk about exactly that and more. Let's get into it. First, Yesterday, we speculated that there was wild and rampant short selling going on in the treasury market. And this has happened historically as well. And what happens when you short the treasury market is you drive yields up. All you have to know is when I say short treasuries, you think yields up. We don't have to get into the mechanics of that. But what does it mean when yields go up? It means interest rates for houses go up and a lot of other things go up and started to see some pain in the real estate market. And it's only been recent. I'll tell you, some of the areas that were hot in July are not now. And some of the areas that were mega multiple offer hot in August are less multiple offer hot. You're going from like 10 offers to all of a sudden two. We're seeing a massive shift in the real estate market. And things are really finally reacting to either A, interest rates being higher, B, the fact that the people who are willing to buy with high interest rates have potentially gone away and maybe seasonality, the fact that we're post uh, school starting. All of those three factors together mean that despite low inventory, you're starting to see some pain. In fact, I don't know that in my career, I've been able to go to a home seller and say, hey, we've been on the market for 10 days and your $590,000 listing, which should be worth based on the comparable sales, 590 to $600,000. That's what it should be worth. And it's listed at 590. And after 10 days, it's not selling. I just saw a real estate agent drop the price of this property by $40,000. Now who knows? Maybe they're trying to go for multiples before winter starts, but this particular house isn't in an area where you're expecting like a big snowstorm to roll in or something. But it's a sign the people are a little worried about what's to come this winter, and that's why we gotta talk about these bond vigilantes. Now, personally, I think that's an opportunity. I think eventually interest rates will go down, but we'll have to look at this chart to see, is that definitely going to be true? We'll see what history says. And is that an opportunity maybe for my real estate startup, House Hack? Maybe, go learn more about what I call the vanguard of real estate over at househack.com and read the offering circular for our fundraise. But look at this chart right here. This is a mind blowing. And then I gotta tell you about this Donald Trump thing as well as some other things, but holy smokes. Usually when the Federal Reserve aggressively raises interest rates, that's the blue line right here, right? The people with the money printer. Usually when the Fed aggressively raises rates, the Federal Reserve rate goes up above the 10 year yield and then it pushes inflation down, or at least that's the goal. That was tried in the early 70s. It was tried in the mid 70s. It was tried in the early 80s. But take a look what happened after at the red lines. This is really interesting. The bond, bond vigilantes came out at the red arrows, I apologize. The bond vigilantes came out and you actually had spikes of the 10 year treasury well above the Federal Reserve's Fed funds rate. That happened both in 84 and 94. And even though we did slowly keep this trend of staying above what the Fed rate is over here, as you can see the red lines just slowly been kind of trending down. And there are other times it's been higher as well, like over here. It's worth noting these spikes have been associated with bond vigilantism. Bond vigilantism is when you have investors, institutions, hedge fund managers, big dollar investors, you know, the real Wall Street suits who got all the dollar hollers, say, you know what? We are tired of a few things. One, reckless government spending. Number two, the potential for more inflation. Look at oil prices. I don't particularly think more inflation is coming, but this is just some of the arguments that they're making. Uh, and quantitative tightening, which is basically the Federal Reserve dumping treasuries on the market. So if they're dumping treasuries that lowers the price, why would you invest in bonds? And high alternative investment yields like money market funds, which yield a lot of money. So, so why invest in treasuries? It doesn't make sense. So then you get what's called a bond vigilante movement, which is where institutions come out and say, you know what? We're going to 
short and dump all of our treasuries, maybe go short on them. And that ends up driving yields higher. Okay, why is that bad? Well, it hurts everything for longer. It gives you potentially a weaker economy going forward. But wait, or does it? While right now we have not experienced that bond vigilanteism yet on this chart, the 10-year treasury is still meaningfully below the Fed funds rate. If the Fed funds rate is 5.5%, 10-year treasuries are sitting at about 4.69% as of this morning. Clearly, there's still a gap here, and maybe that gap will remain. Actually, the 10-year treasury is now at 4.71%. It just keeps rising. Every time I refresh the page, it just keeps going up. What's potentially happening is a return to bond vigilantism. Again, take a shot every time I say this, you'll probably end up in the hospital, so don't end up doing that. I'm going to stop saying it now. But anyway, look at when these instances occurred. And there's talk now that we could be back to seeing this. Now, why is it useful to identify where it occurred and most importantly, where it didn't occur? Ready for this? Look at where it didn't occur. Look at the 2006-2007 recession era. Notice how we did not have bond, well, I'm not going to say it again, that activity right here. Notice how you actually saw the 10-year never suddenly peak substantially and well above the federal funds rate. And then we slid into a dark and dirty recession, the Great Recession. Notice what didn't happen after the last two times we've seen this spike. 84 and 94. Well, it should be obvious. Remember, the gray bars symbolize a recession. What did we not get during those periods? Well, we didn't get a recession. Something else that's worth looking at is that real GDP, which is GDP minus inflation, that's the number you should be looking at, didn't meaningfully shift during the time of BV, or this sort of bond market movement. Instead, you had relatively stable GDP here in 94, for what you could say is stable. You did come off of some higher GDP in 83, but in 84, you really just went to this normalization of a GDP because you were coming out of a hole from 82's recession. Now look, we haven't gone to massively positive 10-year yields yet. But my point of this is arguing that it's possible that higher for longer could also mean the Federal Reserve might reduce their federal funds rate from 5.5 to say 4.5. And the 10 year could then be positive at 4.7, 5%, 5.25%, whatever. And you go back to that sort of vigilanteism. Oh, I said it again. But what happens? You actually are just like in 84, 94, part of a soft landing recovery market. Oh, I said it, I said it. See, people always like, Kevin, the most dangerous words in investing are this time is different. Okay, but maybe this time actually isn't different. It's literally just like 84 and 94, which both of those years were, guess what? Coming out of recessions, coming out of the 82 inflation fight, coming out of the 91 crash, both of them were coming out of recessions. How interesting. Just like Donald Trump potentially being offered billions of dollars is interesting. Look at this. Oh, and then I got to tell you something about Tesla. Boy, I pissed some people off with Tesla yesterday. You know what? Hold on a second. Let's wait on the uh, Sam Bankman fraud and uh, <laughs> Donald T thing here. We got to look at Tesla for a moment. Some people got massively pissed off at me. They're like, Kevin. How could you say that Tesla stock has been flat for basically three years? Okay, first of all, we're talking about the stock market. Nobody's here to tell you that the stock is literally just doing this for three years, okay? What I said was that roughly three years ago, 33 months ago to be precise, which is December to January 2020 to 2021, Tesla was trading for about the same valuation that it is now. Now, notice I said valuation. That's because there are a lot of people like, but Kevin, 
there were stock splits. It's like, oh. Okay. Sometimes I really, like, people like Kevin, you sell courses on building your wealth. How do you know you're going to actually be able to help people? And I say, just read the comments. <laughs> just read the comments. People need help. Okay. The chart's inflation, or uh, the chart is already split adjusted. It's not that hard. It's already split adjusted. If we're trading for $250 now, and we move the mouse over to December and January over here of 2020 and 2021, you're basically at the same level where you are now. Go out to the day basis, and maybe it makes it a little bit more clear. Again, yes. Has there been volatility in Tesla stock? Of course! Nobody's saying there hasn't been, but look at this hump over here. Inflation or er, split adjusted. We're at $300 in January. January 6th, 2021. J6, folks. Tesla closes for 253. That's 33 months ago, okay? It's not great. And obviously the Cybertruck still hasn't gotten delivered. We've been waiting for that. It's supposed to happen in Q3. Nope, not yet. But hey, you know what? At least we can read about Sam Bankman Freed. Apparently wanted to pay Donald Trump $5 billion, according to his biographer, $5 billion to get Donald Trump not to run. Sam Bankman Freed, obviously a massive fraudster of FTX, apparently donated up to $40 million to Democrats and says he secretly donated to Republicans because the best way to get advertising was donating publicly to Democrats and privately to Republicans. Now we gotta talk about the Federal Reserve lag. But before we do that, remember the Noob vs. Pro crash courses are available. We added even more crash courses to these. So if you're looking for more potential options, like how to get paid more at your job, make sure to check out meetkevin.com. They're $89 per crash course. They are brand new content. We also have a course on how to speak and present with confidence. Check these out. Remember, you can click multiple of these to unlock a coupon. And not only that, if you add multiple of them, the total percentage off actually increases. So it gives you a better deal. Uh, one of the most popular things that people are doing now is they're getting the Profit Portal, which basically gives you lifetime access to all of the crash courses that we're releasing, as well as all of the older courses with phenomenal content in them. Property management course, stocks, real estate, lifetime access to the course member live streams, you name it. So learn more at meetkevin.com. Milton Friedman made the term long and variable lags famous. Everyone involved in the economy has been struggling with the question of what is the lag of Federal Reserve policy. And conventional wisdom says it's three to six months. But what we have here is a piece that talks about why is it taking so long for the pain of high interest rates from the Fed to kick in. And here's what we've got. The smartness of smart money is actually potentially increasing the lag time for monetary policy. Now, why is that? Well, that's potentially because corporate borrowers, as we've talked about previously, are able to milk a ton of money off of higher money market rates compared to actually being squeezed by higher interest rates because they have so much cash. But not only do they have so much cash, because they financed a lot of debt at very low interest rates, the current average coupon yield on bonds, which is basically a way of saying how much are these companies paying for bond debt, is 2.9%. It's barely creeping up over 3%. This is while the Fed is sitting at five and a quarter to five and a half percent. Almost 60% of the time before July 2020, so right after COVID, almost 60% of the time before that, the average rate that companies had paid was above 4%. That's the historical level, being above 4%. And the reality is it's not just corporations, but it's also homeowners locking in with 30-year fixed rate mortgages, those incredibly inexpensive mortgage rates. On top of that, when yields were low, 
institutional borrowers actually extended their terms, which meant not only did they lock in lower rates, but they did so for even longer. Therefore, this author argues that the Federal Reserve should be very cautious about raising rates even further because the impact has only begun to be felt. And I think that's where we're starting to see some of the break and pain in real estate that could end up leading to a worse winter this cycle than we had last winter. We'll see, but we're lining up for patient and great opportunities at my real estate startup, House Hack. You know, I've got courses on building your wealth at meetkevin.com. You know, I offer financial advice at stackhack.com. Get stacked with Stackhack. But my real estate startup is positioned to take great advantage of what we can do in the real estate market. We're gonna be patient about it. We're studying every single market individually and we're watching the changes like a hawk. Now, startup investing isn't without risks, but if you wanna learn more, go to househack.com. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you found this helpful and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Not advertise these things that you told us here. I feel like nobody else knows about this. We'll, we'll try a little advertising and see how it goes. Congratulations, man. You have done so much. People love you. People look up to you. Kevin Pafrath there, financial analyst and YouTuber. Meet Kevin. Always great to get your take.